So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about five tips or five important things to know when doing truth trees. You can kind of use this video as a review. If you've gone through uh, my other videos on truth trees, you can take a look at this one and use it to see if, hey, do I understand all of the things that I need to know if I want to have a good grasp of what truth trees are, what are they used for, and how to use them. So my first tip or kind of idea is that you should know the fundamentals upon which truth trees depend. If you don't know some key ideas here, you're going to struggle with the use of truth trees. You should also know how to set up a truth tree to test for various properties like consistency, validity, contingency. You should know the decomposition rules, how to break down various formulas into their component parts, and given a formula that you're looking at, which rule to use. You should be able or familiar with or um, one thing to maybe use is a truth tree check checker, which is a kind of software that will, if you input the argument, it'll give you an answer back. And then finally, and maybe this is the most important thing, is you should be able to understand what a completed truth tree tells you. If you're testing an argument to see if the conclusion follows from the premises or if you're seeing if it's valid or not and you do the tree and you don't understand what the truth tree is telling you given the result of breaking it down and decomposing it, then you haven't really, um, truth trees aren't much good. So let's take a look at some of these tips in a little bit more detail. So the first tip is you should know some of the fundamentals upon which trees depend. If you don't know the fundamentals, then the tree test is going to be pretty useless. You should know the various truth functional operators and symbols, and I have a video on this if you need some refresher, and I'll put it in the description below. You should also know the types of well-formed formulas. If you don't know this information, then you won't um, know which way to break it down or decompose those formulas. So you want to be familiar with whether or not a particular formula is a conjunction or disjunction or negated conjunction and so forth. You also want to know the definitions um, and have a good grasp of the definitions that are tested for. These are things like consistency, inconsistency, contingency, as well as, and I think this is maybe the most important one, the notion of semantic entailment or validity and invalidity. And finally, it's helpful, especially if you're translating arguments from English to the language of propositional logic and then using trees to test that propositional logic argument, you want to have an understanding of how to translate an English sentence into the language of propositional logic. So if you have a sentence like, if John is a doctor, then he makes a lot of money, you want to know that, oh, I see this if-then construction right here, so I should translate it as a conditional because this give, captures the truth conditions of the English uh, sentence. Let's take a look at tip two now. Tip two is knowing how to set up a tree, and I'll provide a link in the description if you've forgotten how to do this, but now, truth trees can be used in a different ways. You might test for consistency or contingency or whether or not a proposition is always going to be true, or you might be testing an argument to see if it's valid. Given what you're testing for, that will play a role in deciding how you set up the tree. And so if you, for example, if you're testing to see if a set of formulas are consistent or inconsistent, you're simply going to stack all of the formulas and then decompose. But if you're testing to see if it's valid or not, what you're going to need to do is stack the premises and negate the conclusion. So let's say we're looking at the formula or the sort of entailment P and S entails, semantically entails R. And we want to see, does this really, uh, does R, is R really entailed by P and S? And so when we use the truth tree test, the formulas that we're going to stack are P and S and the negation of the conclusion. So you want to be sensitive to how to set up the tree when you go about kind of using the tree test. The third tip is knowing the decomposition rules. If you've set up the tree properly, but when you're looking at the various formulas, you're not sure which decomposition rule to apply, then you're going to run into some issues. Knowing which decomposition rule to apply wholly depends upon the type of formula that you're looking at. So if you're looking at a conjunction, for example, then you'll apply the corresponding decomposition rule, which is conjunction decomposition. If you're looking at a disjunction, this is a different type of formula, so the conditions under which it is true will differ from the conditions under which a conjunction is true, and so you'll apply a different decomposition rule, in which case this disjunction is decomposed using disjunction decomposition. 
And just one more example, if you're looking at a negated conjunction, you, if you look at this formula, you should know exactly which rule to apply. You just apply the corresponding decomposition rule given the type of formula it is. So this is a con negated conjunction. So we apply the negated conjunction decomposition rule. My fourth tip is to make use of a truth tree checker, especially if you're having some difficulty getting the right answer, or you want to kind of check your work. Using certain dedicated software that will decompose the tree for you is very helpful. This software won't always kind of tell you which rule is applied at every given line, but it will kind of break down a tree rather quickly and tell you if it's valid or invalid. One tool that I really like is called Proof Tools. In the case of proof tools, what you can do is simply type in various formula as let's say your premises, you kind of add in this P and Q, let's add in a PVQ, a disjunction, and let's kind of test to see if uh, the formula not P and Q follows. So it's gonna take the negation of the conclusion here when we add it in and we can click the button show proof and it'll decompose the entire tree and at the bottom here if you kind of take a look it'll tell us that this is an invalid argument and so i really like this tool i don't have any um, i don't know the uh, creator of the tool and there's certainly others out there but this is one i like to use if i want to do a kind of complicated tree quickly and i want to see if when i did it by hand if i got the right answer the last tip I have for you is, and I think this might be the most important one, is that once you've set up the tree correctly, you've decomposed it correctly using the decomposition rule, and it's all completed, you want to understand what a completed or a completely decomposed truth tree tells you. If you don't understand what it tells you, then it's kind of what was the point of doing it in the first place. One of the things that a tree can tell you is whether or not an argument is valid or invalid. So you want to understand, like, let's say you decompose a tree, you're testing an argument, if P then Q, Q therefore Q, you want to understand what this tree tells you. And you want to understand it not only if it tells you if it's valid or invalid, um, but also what, let's say, a completed open branch will tell you. So if there's a completed open branch for this in the tree of this argument, you want to say, well, what does this tell me about the truth values of the propositional letters that compose this argument, as well as what does it tell me about the truth values of the formulas that compose it? So the truth values of the propositional letters like P and Q, and what does it tell me about the complex formulas like if P then Q, Q and the conclusion here? So those are sort of five things I think you should know for understanding how to use truth trees, or it's, you might think of them as tips. If you have any questions about this material, feel free to um, ask those questions in the comment section below, and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible.